If you are making a game in 2017 on a platform that supports achievements and you know your game will benefit from achievements, it's pretty much a no-brainer. Of course, it does depend on the game you're making. If you are making a game that's more of a multiplayer online game, you should probably focus more on leaderboards as they fit your game better than achievements. Nintendo has not supported either of these for too long now. Many people demanded that games such as NES Remix should feature a leaderboard, mainly because it seems like the game was intended just for leaderboards. Nintendo's newest system, the Switch, has been breaking from what Nintendo has been normally doing for the past decade. Now they have paid online for example. And according to the developer of Lich Spear, I apologize if I did say that wrong, Nintendo has plans for leaderboards and achievements in the Switch's future. So the devs of Lich Spear, I haven't personally heard of the game, which apparently was praised by the community, they were answering some questions people had about the Switch version of Lich Spear. And someone asked if there would be leaderboard support, and what they responded with revealed a lot more information than what was requested. Nintendo doesn't have an official support for achievements in leaderboards like Sony and Microsoft, but we know that they're working on it. Now leaderboards is not something I myself am hugely into. I like the concept and I think it fits well for games like Team Fortress 2, but I'm just not into it. Now achievements are a completely different story. Achievements are without a doubt one of the main things that keeps me coming back and playing the game. Around August of this year, I had around 161 hours of Gary's Mod played. And I've had Gary's Mod for around 2 years now. Come to find out that there is an achievement in that game that you get for playing 168 hours of Gary's Mod. So I wasn't that far from that achievement. I rushed that achievement. I was playing Gary's Mod whenever I had the time to. Then I found out that there is a bug in Gmod where it doesn't count 168 hours as a full week and you don't get the achievement. Even though 168 hours is a full week. And because I thought, oh, maybe if I just play for a few more hours, it will count it. I'm now sitting at 202 hours of straight Gmod. Now, there is two things that I have to let you all know about that story. First, I didn't just play Gary's Mod to get that achievement. But it was the ultimate motivation to play that game, just knowing that I would get some kind of reward for playing a game for 168 hours. And second, to some people, that may not seem like a lot of hours. My friend has put over twice the amount of hours into Gmod than me. My friend Temper has 418 hours of Gmod. So 202 is nothing. Nothing compared to that. And there is even an achievement in that game where you can get by putting around 8,000 760 hours of Gmod. That's a full year of your life of nothing but Gary's Mod. So if you are confused at why I brought up that story, it's because it's a good example of why achievements affect people so much. And the main reason why achievements give people so much motivation is because they want to be rewarded for doing something in their game. And if Nintendo adds some other benefit into the mix, like maybe some silver My Nintendo coins for unlocking an achievement, and maybe if you do something insane like playing a full year of Splatoon 2, you get some gold coins for that, that's gonna really motivate people to become achievement hunters on Nintendo Switch. And I hope Nintendo is actually working on achievements and leaderboards. Of course, that's just my opinion. If you did find this video interesting or just liked it, please share it on social media, it really does help. Please send me any gaming or tech news articles that you want me to talk about. And if you do ask, you can get a shout out for it. Leave your thoughts on this topic in the comments, and see you.